Now then, and welcome back to another episode of Pack Opening with Dean. Hello. So we're back and we've started opening 110 packs for the Core Set 2020. We've got 96 left. Um, first episode went very well. We've got quite a lot of good cards. Shall we begin and see what we get for the next 96? Here we go then. Uh, we've seen that. We've seen that. Oh, now this is potentially the best card in the set. A Lotus Field, a land that's hexproof, enters the battlefield tapped. When it enters, sacrifice two other lands, and it adds mana of any colour. So when it enters the battlefield, turn one, say, and there are no other lands to sacrifice. It can't, it can't. It can't enter the battlefield? No, you, you can only... You can only uh... It doesn't say sacrifice two lands for oh. it to enter the battlefield. Like some of the uh, like the gates used to be pay one mana or sacrifice this land. Oh, right, yeah. So, so it, if it enters the battlefield turn one, there are no other lands for you to sacrifice, so it's and there's no it's void. There's no, uh, there's no penalty clause either. Uh-huh, exactly. So, yeah, that'll be interesting to see how that works. See how Arena manages that. Yeah. Because it would be sacrifice two lands and put this into play, <clears throat> wouldn't it? Yeah, that, that'll be obscene if you can do that. <laughs> That's crazy. A turn one, three mana of any one colour. Then that then filters out all of those cards that we've got in mono colours at the minute. Where you could just basically have one Lotus yeah, Field yeah. tap for three. Yeah. That's pretty epic. Yeah. Alright then, let's come on. That's that's pretty good. Yeah, I like that. That's an amazing ramp card. Well there's one we've not seen. Blood of for Bones. Uh sacrifice a creature as an additional cost to this spell. Sacrifice a creature, return creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Then return another creature card from your graveyard to your hand. So that's the reanimation of those big creatures that you can't cast. So you could basically play a black discard reanimate deck with all of the elements, yeah. the three mana uh, same colour elements, yeah, and yeah. just use these kind of spells to put them onto the battlefield without casting them. Yeah. Crazy. Uh, Master Splicer. When Master Splicer enters the battlefield, create a 3-3 colours golem artifact creature token. Golems you control get plus one, plus one. Very good. Yeah, that's pretty nice. I like actually. it. Yeah, so it's a 4-4 four, four when it enters the battlefield. There's uh, that blue artificer that pumps them and makes them indestructible as well. Cool. That would be a right combo with that, wouldn't it? Artificers. Blue-white artifacts deck. Looks good. Mm, let's see what's on here. Oh, hey, oh. That's a big mythic. It is. What is the artwork of? Somebody casting a spell with a pigeon over their heads? No, it's a big old bird, look. <laughs> it's a big old bird with over the head of somebody. Some, yeah, somebody. Holding somebody in their claws, oh, maybe. Yeah, yeah, maybe it is, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Kikak. Kikak. It sounds almost like the birds gave him the name. Kikak, Kikak. <laughs> Wind's Fury. Uh, it's a bird wizard. Is the wizard a bird or is the bird holding a wizard? Or is it the bird casting the spell? I'm not 100% sure whether it's a bird. I think that's his head there, look. Yeah, that's the head that's of a bird. That's his robes, and that's his arms, and there's his wings. So I think, actually... It's a bird casting the spell. Yeah, it's actually a bird. It's yeah. an actual bird <clears throat> wizard. A legendary creature bird wizard. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, create a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature token with flying. Sacrifice a spirit, spirit to add one red mana. So 3-3 three, three for 4. So whenever you cast a spell, you're making another creature. Not bad. It's in three colours, Jeskai... So it's going to be difficult to cast, but it's going to be quite a nice little captain for throwing out in the Jesco. There's some of those... Um, have you seen those red-white decks that are doing, like, creature enhancements? Mm -hmm. So they've got things that when you cast them, they keep recasting and things. They'd have to add blue into it, but still. Yeah. That... It, it worked nicely in a commander deck as well, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah not a bad commander deck. Jesco commander. But obviously Arena haven't done that yet. Maybe yeah. soon. Hopefully. I thought they were doing well getting historic in. Well, there's another rare for your collection. Uh, Ember Hauler, Sacrifice, deals two damage to any target. Mm. Simple enough. Pretty simple, yeah. This ah. is quite good, though, this one. Three mana for a 2-3 flyer is nice enough. Uh, when you gain life, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. It's an Ajani Pride, mate, in black, black, with flying. Yeah. <laughs> it's hardcore, that, isn't it? Yeah. All right, yeah, that's pretty good. 
and oh, to, cavalier. to go with it, the Elemental Knight, Cavalier of Night. Lifelink 4-5. When it enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice another creature. When you do, destroy target creature and opponent controls. When Cavalier of Night dies, return target creature card with converted mana cost 3 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. So very good for those reanimating type decks where you don't mind when something dies because it has another effect. It's not hugely expensive either as in the grand scheme of things. That's only 5 mana. I know you've got to have the 3 black, but that, well, that's actually the same size as an Epicure of Blood. It's almost a 5 mana 5-5, five five, but you get the life link instead of a full 5. So it's a 5 mana, 4 life link. That's pretty good. Yeah. And you get to destroy another creature as it enters the battlefield, which is yeah, pretty good. Yeah, yeah. It's technically one black mana more than that nasty hound that used to destroy things for a 2-2. Two -two. Yeah, that's right. It's One uh, mana more. Quite nice, actually, that. Very, very nice. You can nice. tell why that's mythic. Yep. <laughs> and some more. Some more random cards. Ogre Siege. Siege Breaker. I quite like that. So you pay its mana, and then later on you can pay its mana again to destroy target creature that was dealt damage this turn. My aristocrat's deck could effectively sort of cycle through targets by d g getting something killed, dealing one damage to it, and then paying the cost. Yeah, that'd yeah. be good for an aristocrat's deck. Mm-hmm. Not bad. Uh, we've got Wave Crasher. When Yarak Wave Crasher enters the battlefield, return another creature you control to its owner's hand. Good for the Teferi Bounce things that we've been looking at in the yeah, previous episode. Yeah. Good for any bouncing, really. And, it, and it's an elemental for that elemental deck, because they yeah. seem to have a lot of trigger effects. Oh, uh, hey, up. Another rare land, Field of the Dead. Uh, when it enters the battlefield tapped, adds colourless mana. Whenever Field of the Dead or another land enters the battlefield under your control, if you control seven or more lands with different names, create a black zombie creature token. That's a 2-2. Two -two. That could be interesting, but I think it's a bit late in the game to be... It's pretty difficult. It's got to be seven or more lands with different names. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of a weird one. I don't know where it stands in my eyes. It's not too bad, I suppose. If you're playing a multicolour deck, say a three-colour deck, and you've got a few other lands with different names... Your jewels, for instance, would would make it work, but a gate deck. It'd be so, yeah, it'd be so difficult to get it to work that I think the game would be over before you ever start producing tokens myself. But well, some of them gate decks do take a long time to work, don't they? Yeah. So then you start producing tokens every time a land enters the battlefield, and if you're doing one of those rampy gate decks, then yeah, land enters yeah. the battlefield two or three times. Um, yeah. The thing about that gate deck is it's running on uh, Gates of Blaze, which is kind of antithetical to that. <laughs> yeah, it destroys itself. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh. Hey, oh. <laughs> I thought we'd broken it. I thought we'd broken we were it. going into lag again, yeah. Oh, that's nice, though. Uh, an Emperorian Eagle. Other creatures with flying get plus one, plus one. It's very, very nice. cheap as well. Yeah, blue-white flyers, token creature of choice. It's going to be the creature of choice. Yeah. Yeah, blue white fire deck. Masterful replication. Uh, create two three three golem artifact creature tokens. We've seen that somewhere. Nice, yeah. Choose target artifact you control. Each other artifact you control becomes a copy of that artifact until the end of turn. Now that could be ridiculous if you've got the token deck with that thing that does the plus one plus one. You can tap your entire deck and just gain exponential tokens. Yes, and if it's all servos and you've got plus one plus one to each golem artifact creature you control, you can turn all of your little servos into golems. Oh my god, and then, yeah. And if they've all got counters on thanks to uh, the other thing, <laughs> they're, they all just. The Artificer yeah. deck is so The Artifact viable. deck. Yeah. Tezzerath, come back. Yeah, he's there as well, isn't he? He's another one that creates those little artifacts. Yep. And you've got draw power with him as well. That, actually, that is going to be really silly. Oh, we need now is Thop to Thoundry and the Sword of the Meek. And oh. I've got my old deck back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go, look. Loyal Pegasus cannot attack or block alone. But he is a 2-1 for one mana, which is quite nice. It's all right, but it can't attack or block alone. No. So he's no good on turn two unless you're playing another creature that's got haste. It'd be good for those white weenie decks, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got flying for two as well. That's that's a key element for it. And the chances are, if you're playing a flyers deck, you can have lots of flyers coming onto your battlefield and flying over for damage. Yeah, I think that's quite powerful, actually. Yeah. 
and oh. another one of these. I'm doing well for him. Yep. <laughs> Something tells me my vampire deck's getting a real big boost. <laughs> Get a play set of them vampires in that deck, no yeah. problem. Uh, another Thought Distortion, that's pretty cool. Empty the uh, Counterspell deck and another one of those Drakes 1-1 one, one that you can sack off. I think that's quite powerful. Oh, and the, a rare of your choice. Enough said. Yeah, good little pack really. Yeah. Uh, Ember Hauler again and Bloodthirsty Aerialist again. It's almost like this pack was duplicated. Ah, now this uh, is different. A Hanged Executioner. A 1-1 one, one Spirit for three that's got flying. Okay. When it enters the battlefield, create a white spirit creature token with flying. So it's two 1-1 one, one flying creature spirits for three. And then you've got exile it and exile a target creature for four mana. Which is quite nice, actually. It's not a bad removal. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad. I've seen worse. Seems to be a bit of lag on the server again today. It's not accepting the clicks every time. Everybody's opening the packs today. Yeah. Um... Pulse of Murusia. Return target creature or land from a graveyard to its owner's hand and gain six life. And it's only three mana. That is three potentially mana. quite ridiculous. For six life is pretty ridiculous. And, and return, you yeah. drawing a card out of a graveyard and bringing yeah. it back into play. Yeah, that's really nice. It's very good. Disfigure's awesome for for that black vampire deck again. Disfigure yeah, yeah. things. Yeah, there's, there's already a card that does something very similar, but not for one mana, I don't think. Uh, dead weight is a minus two minus two enchantment, isn't it? Oh, it is, isn't it? And this is an instant. This is actually yeah. marginally better because you can do it at instant speed. Yeah, I yeah. quite like that. I quite like that. Whereas the enchantment stays there, so you could add to it with another minus one minus one from somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's quite it's relatively pleasant actually. Uh -huh. Early doors and moving. Oh, way up. Thunderkin Awakener. Two mana for a one two with haste. That's nice enough. When it attacks, choose target elemental creature in your graveyard with a toughness less than Thunderkin's toughness. It's not going to be easy. No. Return that card to the battlefield tapped and attacking. Sacrifice it at the beginning of next end step. That said, I mean, if you've got something like Blanchwood Armour on it... Yeah, then you can bring out the big stuff and bring them back for a second attack. Mm -hmm. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. That could be seen some playing Gruul, I feel. Uh, yeah. yeah. As long as you can boost it. Mm-hmm. And another pattern matcher that we've had, and a roaming shaman. I think we got one of those earlier, didn't we? As well. Target player shuffles any number of target cards from the graveyard into the library. I think that was the first pack, was one of them, actually. Yeah. Oh, and enough yeah. said. Sorted. I'm never upset to see them, you know. Well, you can get whatever you want then, can yeah. you? It's great. Meteor Golem's back in, and Seasons of Growth are back in. Oh, we've seen that one already. Uh, so, yeah. Where's your removal of your pure artifact deck, I suppose? It's expensive, but. Well, yeah. Not so much when you've got affinity for artifacts. No. Search your library for up to two creature cards with different names, reveal them and put them in your hand, then shuffle your library. Five mana, draw two epic green cards and play them next turn. It's a tutor. Simple and effective. It's a, it's a tutor that does two cards. And isn't actually, in the grand scheme of things, particularly for green, terribly expensive. It's almost showing in the image that you're going to fetch the Elemental Knight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, I like. <laughs> Maybe this pack we get the Elemental Knight. Yeah. Another one coming, going in. That's interesting. Moldvine Reclamation. Whenever a creature you control dies, gain one life and draw a card. That's nice. That's epic for um, Golgari. Yeah. Yep. And another Steel Overseer. I'm so jealous right now. That's two you've got. I'm going to have to pay for four. Yeah. Another uh, Skywood Vanguard. Very good. And a Bark High Troll. Enters the battlefield with a 1-1 counter on it. Making it a 3-3 for two. Green mana. Remove a 1-1 counter from it. And it gains Hexproof until the end of turn. Good for your removal spell. Cheap as well. Not bad. Yeah. Chandra! Oh, yes. That's what we like to see. It's the little Chandra. It's the baby Chandra. It's the Acolyte of Flame for three mana, which comes out as a four. You can do the minus two twice, but there's no pluses. I think it's an interesting way to do the Planeswalkers. It's kind of a cross between those uncommon Planeswalkers from the last set, where you didn't have any pluses, and actually giving us something of value. There is a plus, but it's in the text. 
your top zero thing puts a loyalty counter on each red work planeswalker you control, including Chandra. Each, yes. <laughs> so it wouldn't be a plus one, would it? Because you've already given a plus one. That's very good. Uh, create two one one red elemental creature tokens. They gain haste. Sacrifice them at the beginning of the next end step. Okay, not bad. I, if you'd I'd like that in my uh, in my um, aristocrats deck because what I do with that is I. For zero, create two elemental creatures. Hello. Get that priestess, sack them, and do and, and gain and, all the benefits of sacking two creatures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah very good. And uh, minus two, you may cast target instant or sorcery card with converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard. If that card will be put into your graveyard, just turn exile it instead. So we're recasting spells from your graveyard. Not bad as well. Not bad at all. It's pretty cool. Chandra. Not so hot for the uh, not, for the for the aristocrats because they don't really have a lot of those. But no, but not so hot. But, you get it? Yeah. Not so hot. We're <laughs> 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 so funny. <laughs> Let's move along. Move along quickly. <laughs> Moving along. We'll be getting dad joke comments in the dad uh, comment section. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Another diamond him. knight. He's yeah. very good. This is new, I think. Scholar of Ages. Seven mana for a 3-3. When it enters the battlefield, return up to two instant or sorcery cards from your graveyard to your hand. Control control, man, control McGavin. Yeah, it's not bad. It's just expensive. Yeah. Uh, repeated reverberation. Ooh. Looks good. A four mana for an instant. Uh, you cast the next instant spell, cast a sorcery spell, or activate a loyalty ability this turn... Copy that spell or twice uh, or ability twice. You may choose new targets for the copies. I like that. It's expensive if you're combining it with instant spells or sorcery spells. It's good for those planeswalkers. But it's very good for planeswalker abilities that you yeah. can do them twice. I like that. When you cast your next or activate your next loyalty ability. So with Chandra, and you up all planeswalkers one loyalty. Red planeswalkers, but yeah. Yeah. And do that ability twice. There, there's, Four mana. There's, you can do it um, twice. there's a thing going around the internet now saying that it should be viable to do a Chandra tribal deck. Chandra tribal, like Chandra, Chandra, and more Chandra. All Chandra. <laughs> yeah. And do things like that in it. That's not a bad idea. I like mm. it. Yeah. But if you wanted to do uh, two shocks, just because shocks also in the same pack, you just do five mana, double shock. Uh, Nickel Bolas the Ravager's ability to. Uh, Take a planeswalker out of a graveyard and put it into play. Doubled twice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. The more you look at it, the more you think planeswalkers. It works very nicely with. Yeah, it's, I don't think it's so great for the instance of sorceries because I think you should be dead by the time you get to cast that. Otherwise, well, maybe if you're playing a red deck, <laughs> yeah. then you win. Yeah. yeah, particularly if the ley lines out. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh. Oh, now. That, they're all new. <laughs> Howling Giant, a 7 mana 5-5 five, five with reach. Uh, enter the battlefield, create wolf tokens. Wolf deck. Another like wolf deck. That's another thing. I've got to make an artifact deck with golems and a wolf deck. It looks to me like you need ramp with a few wolf deck. A but... giant druid. Yeah. <laughs> and Diviner's Lockbox. That's nice. I love the art on that. It's pretty cool. One mana tap, choose a card name, then reveal the top card of your library. If the card is the chosen name, sacrifice the lockbox, draw three cards, activate this ability only any time you could cast a sorcery. Interesting if you know what the top card of your library is. Yeah. Because there are a few things. Like, there were a few cards where you could put the card, you could uh, have your opponent put your creature onto the top of your deck. Yeah. Like totally lost and those kind of cards. You know what's next on the top of your decks. So you just use that, draw three cards, um, and so on. Very nice. And another ley line. Excellent. Oh, um, if it's in your opening hand, of course, the ley line you put it on the battlefield to start the game, which is very good. Whenever you tap a creature for mana, add one extra green. Ramp your ramping. Ramp your ramps and ramp your ramps up your ramp. Then for 8 mana, put a 1-1 one, one counter on each creature you control. And ramp your ramp some more. Yeah. Why yeah. not? Yeah, that is that is pleasant. Particularly if you can get it out in that first hand. Yep. Yeah. yeah. A tribal elf deck. Yes. For sure. The existing tribal elf's quite nice, but that just makes it silly. Creatures you control get plus 2, plus 2 and gain trample until the end of turn. Yeah. Nice enough. That's nice. 
Scampering Scorcher. When it enters the battlefield, create two 1-1 one, one red elemental creature tokens. Elementals you control gain haste until the end of turn. It's a 1-1, one, one, so that thing we were looking at earlier could pull that back out of the graveyard and create another two 1-1s one, yeah, as well. Yeah. So again, sacrifice deck wouldn't be too bad. It's almost like that red-white haste spell that, that creates you creatures and gives everything haste and moves moves them along. Not bad. It's not not bad. bad, that. Elemental Tribal looks good. Ooh. Glinthorn Buccaneer. Three mana, two, four, haste. Not bad. Whenever you discard a card, Glinthorn Buccaneer deals one damage to each opponent. And there were some red creatures that made you discard cards to draw new cards. Oh, and that annoying planeswalker that drops seven cards off the top of your library. Mm hmm. And this one is also pay two mana, discard a card, draw a card, activate this ability only if Glinthorn Buccaneer is attacking. Not bad. Not bad at all. It's also whenever you discard a card. So if you have the planeswalker, you'd be milling yourself and you'd probably be running for that um, uh, uh, Jace finisher. Jace Finisher or Reanimate with Black. Yeah, or killing, or just killing with the damage off this thing. Two of them out, and you wouldn't take long to kill somebody with that, with that Planeswalker out. Uh huh. Not bad. All right. It's looking pretty hot, that card. Mill deck's going to be a thing again. A big, a lot bigger thing than they are now. They always have been, they always will be. Well, we've seen him. So. Oh, here's another wolf, look. One it, one it. Uh, other wolves and werewolves you control get plus one, plus one. At the beginning of your next end step, if you didn't cast a spell this turn, create a 2-2 wolf creature token. I remember that from, like, Innistrad. Yeah. That the same ability. <clears throat> it might be a different name, but it was that kind of ability. If you hadn't cast a spell, you would flip into werewolves and stuff like that, wouldn't you? You'd flip cards. Um, or bring out other creatures. I think so, I was on hiatus in Innistrad. Yeah, probably. But that's pretty good. It's a 4-4 four, four for 4. And it's, it's nice. flash. And it gives the tribal wolves and werewolves a plus one plus one it's amazing yeah it's amazing for a tribal deck yeah nice one we've not seen hard cover one mana enchanted creature plus zero plus two and has draw and then discard a card that goes well with that card we were just on about that gets things out that's lower than its toughness yeah nice and simple Noxious Grasp, destroy target creature or planeswalker that's green or white and gain one life. Sideboard card. So right, yeah. And oh. another Nightpack Ambusher. Double Jealous again. Tap on the Ambusher. There we go. <clears throat> oh, that looks hard, Wolfy. Uh, wolf Rider Saddle, yeah. When it enters the battlefield, you create a 2 2 wolf and attach it. Uh, I think. Yeah, yeah, attach it. And then creatures. A uh, quick creature gets plus one plus one and can't be blocked by more than one creature. So just pump it up and run at them. And they can only chump block. Yeah, that's and if you get nice. it to the right size, then everything's a chump block. <laughs> yeah. Carnage Tyrant. Equip. <laughs> <laughs> chump block. So, oh, way up. That looks. Look at the art on that. Very cool. Blood Soaked Altar. Very cool. Six mana artifact. Pay two life. Discard a card. Sacrifice a creature. Create a demon. And <laughs> there's a 5-5 five, five we're flying. I had that played against me last night. Activate this ability any time you can do a sorcery. Not bad. The demon summoning blood-soaked altar. Discard a card, sacrifice a creature, and pay two life. Pretty expensive, but you get a 5-5 five, five flying demon. Whenever you want one, really. Yeah. Pretty cool. It was a shame the fellow who was trying to do it on me last night was on seven life when he started trying to do that. <laughs> uh-huh. Oh, another Chandra. Get ready to meet my place. This is mommy Chandra, though. Yes. Not baby Chandra. Big mommy Chandra. Spell can't be counted. Very good. Each opponent gets an emblem. At the beginning of their upkeep, the emblem deals one damage to you. And that's a plus two ability. That yep. is obscene. Especially when you can double that with a does twice. <laughs> or um, there's a bolos that can do it for you a second time as well. Chandra Awakening Inferno deals three damage to tar uh, each non-elemental creature. Board sweeper. And each you can do it non twice. Early doors. Yeah. Uh, and deals <clears throat> X damage to target creature or planes worker. If the, part, uh, if the permanent was dealt damage this way, would die this turn, exile it instead. There goes your rekindling phoenix. Uh-huh. Nice. Very nice. Not bad at all. It comes out with six with a plus two ability. It's crazy. Yeah. So we've seen the splicer. 
I don't think we have we seen this fellow. I don't think we've seen him yet. Gruesome Scalger. Yeah. When he enters the battlefield, deal damage to target opponent or creature equal to the number of creatures you control. That's pleasant. So right, yeah. A orc. Oh. <laughs> and there's your playset of the knights, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Near enough for the playset, or is it the playset? I think we've actually that, had a that playset. Is, that yeah. is the playset of those rare vampire knights. Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that. Yep. If only you could get a playset of all the rares at this rate. Yeah, it'd be nice. Wouldn't but it? that was very quick. There's not so rare as a rare. They call it the <laughs> Ebon Legion now. I'm sure it used to be the Ebon Hand back in the, back in um, the day. Maybe now you should make an Ebon Legion deck. Uh, another Diamond Knight, another Bloodthirsty Aerialist, mm -hmm. another one for that uh, Ebon Legion deck, Ooh. and the Loxodon Life Chanter, an Elephant Cleric, six mana for a four six. That's okay. When it enters the battlefield, you may have your life total become the total toughness of all creatures you control. Now that's ridiculous. <laughs> that's really epic. Yeah. If you've got a decent amount of white big creatures, though. I'll read the bottom creatures. ability. Now, that is just silly. Uh, six mana again. It gets plus X plus X until the end of turn where X is your life total. <laughs> so if you've got a huge amount of, uh, of toughness creatures out and you go up to like 46 life, you can have a 46-46. You can have a 46, 46. Yes. If, if you had a big life linky deck and your life total was massive, you could just spend six mana and give massive bonus to the life chanter. Now, if, if you're playing a green-white deck and you get the uh, god from War of the Spark out, Ronus, you can have a... <laughs> the turn before. Yeah. No, well, no, you get him out, you get that out, you pay its cost, get make it big, get him out, it doubles his power and gives him trample, so it's game over. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. <laughs> not bad, not bad at all. But... Difficult to get to. The, still, the cost still is prohibitive, game. but yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's It'll got enormous to potential. Yeah, it's a game winner on its own. Yeah. Oh, that's a new land. Cryptic caves. Well, it adds for mana, and for one mana, you can sacrifice it, draw a card, activate the ability only if you control five or more lands. Sorry. It's yeah. It's. I like this is quite nice Goblin Ringleader uh, for 4 mana it's only a 2-2 two -two with haste so I better have something good in this text it does when Goblin Ringleader enters the battlefield reveal the top 4 cards of your library put all Goblin cards revealed this way into your hand and the rest on the bottom of any order very good for a Goblin deck yes Yeah. you end up with potentially 4 Goblins drawn into hand on a deck that normally runs out of hand very quickly and if you if you've got your four mana that in a goblin deck you probably don't need any more. So if you've got a handful of land, it goes straight to the bottom of the library out of the way when you cast him up. Yeah, yeah. And he's another haste goblin, and those haste goblins are not quite a nuisance. They're a menace. Yeah. <laughs> I don't get a menace. <coughs> and oh. a, another life changer. Yep. Double oh, tap on the life changer. It'll change your life that deck. <laughs> oh, you got a Chandra. Novice as an uncommon there. Yeah. Elementals you can draw get plus two plus zero until the end of turn. Add two mana or deals two damage. That's quite pleasant. Very nice as well. Yeah. You got another little uncommon there and the rare. Oh. Seen her before. Uh, Kaya. Oh, no. No, the a human one. cleric, Zenith Seeker. Flying and vigilance three three for three, but three different colours. Oh, yes. When it enters the battlefield, look at the top six cards of your library. You may reveal an angel card, a demon card, and a dragon card from among them and put them into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any random order. Really? Ooh. Dragons, angels, and demons deck is a thing. <laughs> it reminds me of our birthright campaign. <laughs> it's going to be a thing, isn't it? That's pretty <laughs> epic. Yeah, that is, that is nice. And look at the casting cost for a 3 3 flying vigilance. Yeah, that's pretty good on its own. <laughs> yeah. If you've got the right colours, of course, but yeah. you would do. Well, what a way to end this episode. Yeah. That's not bad, is it? It's a pretty good one. Uh, thank you all very much for watching. Uh, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe. We're going to continue with the next episode very, very soon. We've got 73 packs left to go. Tune in for the next one. Cheerio. <clears throat>